Happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day began in the United States at the initiative of Anna Jarvis in the early 20th century. Mother's Day is a celebration honoring all mothers, motherhood, the maternal bond, and the influence of mothers in society. We would like to give a warm thank you and deepest love to all of the mothers at the Greater Refuge Temple for lifting us up in prayer, for greeting us with your smiles at the door, for talking to us, and for praying with us throughout our time. We are so blessed to have you. And we say to all of the mothers of Greater Refuge Temple, Happy Mother's Day. We love and appreciate you. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Ken coming to you from the Greater Refuge Temple Church here in the city of Jacksonville, Florida, located at 1317 Row Avenue. Certainly we do thank God for you today Amen. And for our sister church, amen, in Lakeland, Florida, amen, located at 1258 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Certainly we thank God today, 
Amen. Father, our pastor, amen, who pastors both campuses. We thank God for him. Person of all, Dr. General Gruber, amen, senior. What a wonderful, amen, joy it is to have you come to us and with us by way of social media, amen, to hear a word from the Lord, to be blessed, amen, by the songs, by the praises, amen, for when the praises go up and the blessings come down. So may the Lord bless you today. We want to thank you for, amen, your special gifts, amen, to the ministry. May the Lord richly bless you, amen, in Jesus' name. So don't forget on this week, amen, to call at least three people, amen, and remind them of the goodness of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And give them a testimony about how God has blessed you and saved you. Praise the Lord and delivered you. What a testimony, amen. What a witness that is to someone that doesn't know the Lord. So we're grateful to God today, amen. If you have a special need, a special prayer, we ask that you contact us, email us, e-box, inbox us, and let us know what miracle you desire of God. So when we pray, we can pray one for the other. Father, we thank you today for being a great God an almighty God, a wise God, that is above all gods, for there is no God like you. We pray for healing, we pray for deliverance. Bless our world, our nation, our country. Oh God, as we go through this pandemic and as you bless already, continue to bless us, oh God. Let those, oh God, who are sick be healed, Lord, and let those who are not delivered be saved, sanctified and fill with your precious gift and the power of the Holy Ghost. Do it for us now, Lord. Protect us, take care of us, and we give your name, glory, and praise. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen. We thank God today. We're believing God, amen, that when we pray, amen, God will hear us and he will answer us. So may the Lord bless you today. We're going to our scripture. Amen. And following the scripture would be, amen, the selection. And following that would be the man of God, Apostle Dr. General Gruber, who will come, amen, and give us a word from the Lord. May God bless you today. Praise the Lord, everyone, and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our scripture this morning will be coming from the first chapter of the Gospel of St. John, beginning at first verse. And reads, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We thank God for the reading of his holy scripture. May God bless you in a mighty way. Thank you. 
Today is Mother's Day, and the pastors of the Greater Refuge Temple honor the women who have raised us and sacrificed to help us to become the contributing members of society that we are today. We honor our pastor's wives, Lady Elvinia Gruber and Mother Shelley Gruber. Please join me in celebrating the Mother's Board of the Jacksonville campus. The President is Mother Lawanta Harris, Vice President Mother Cuba Austin, and Leader of the Prayer Warriors, Mother Yvonne Walker. We celebrate the members of the board of the Lakeland campus, whose president is Mother Joyce Boatwright. A mother's smile will brighten any moment. A mother's hug will bring joy to any day. A mother's love will stay with us forever and touch our lives in the most precious way. The values you've taught, the care you've given and the wonderful love you've shown has enriched our ministry in more ways than we can count. We love and appreciate you, your pastors, the Most Honorable Apostle Dr. Gentle L. Groover Sr. and the Bishop Kenneth Groover. We thank you mothers. May God continue to bless each of you. We are very thankful for our elders' wives, our deacons' wives, the sisters who serve as auxiliary leaders and spiritual team leaders, and to all of the beautiful women of God in both the Jacksonville and Greater Refuge Temple Lakeland campuses. Certainly we thank God for each of the beautiful roses that he has planted in the temple's gardens. We love you and may God continue to bless you today, 
and always. shall remain, it's never fading, it's here to stay, when my back's against the wall, you rise above them all, a hand to help me, and ease the fall, from beginning to the end, and in the end between, you're so consistent. For me, can't nothing be my mother's love. Can't nothing shake what she's made of. She's made like heaven up above. Can't nothing be my mother's love. I find it so amazing. I didn't fully. And I'm holding on And every time I call Before a single word You know exactly What's on my From beginning to the end And in the in between You stay consistent For me came up Precious mothers who have been there for us and blessed us and held us. The church is similar to mothers who embraces us when we when we cry. I want to say thank you to the mothers on this Mother's Day. You mean so much to the body of Christ. Keep on mothering us through your prayers and to your development in God, what you've learned about God, the kind of love that you have found in God. So may you keep on loving us mothers and serving, praying for us. 
So I want to say happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you for all that you contributed and is contributing to us, the body of Christ. In that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ, keep on keeping on.
Greetings and praise the Lord, everyone. The Lord has blessed us to connect once more in his wonderful name. It's always a pleasure and an honor as we observe the goodness of God as he keep us in touch with each other because we are one in him in every way except the natural. What a blessing it is for us to maintain that connection in that oneness in the Almighty God. I'd like to us to use once again, and from this verse, uh, a very special, uh, from it, there's so much to gain from it. It's uh, the book of Colossians, the first chapter in verse 24. Who now rejoicing in my suffering for you, and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. So much is said here. So much is communicated here in the Holy Scripture. Paul's writings here is, who now rejoice. He speak of his own personal feelings, how he feel about where he is, how jubilant he feels, how happy he is to be where the Lord has caused him to arrive. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church. He found joy in suffering for the church. He found joy in suffering for everyone who has come to believe God, trust him, who have said yes to the Lord. When he said church, it included every believer, everyone who have made Jesus their Lord. I am rejoicing in my affliction for you, he is saying and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. He's also reporting to us that there are things to be finished. There are things to bring to its its climax to bring to the full approval of God. There is work to be done, he is saying, and he is going to play, pay his role or play his role in, that, in, in finishing that work. And while doing so, he is rejoicing in it. It's not a, a, a drudgery to him. It is a joy for him to suffer 
for the church, for the body of Christ. He is concerned. He is concerned about finishing what the Lord Himself has started. A topic for today is rejoicing in the finished work that was accomplished by Jesus our Lord, finishing strong, finishing strong. We are believing God for blessing us to be a part of the church through believing in him, trusting him, and as a result, we became a part of the body. We became a part of his family. And there is a, a development that is to be accomplished and Paul is excited about it. He's thankful that he has a pawn in it. What a blessing it is for us to have someone whom the Lord has chosen, who has given himself so much to God that he rejoices in whatever he may do for us. May the Lord bless you and me as we look on the Holy Scriptures and, and the leading of God to lead this on record. He said, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake. The affliction of Christ in my own flesh, that of which is to be accomplished It has nothing to do with redemption because Jesus Christ, he paid all that we owed on that cross. But that was not the finished work. He is continuing to develop us through various means through testing our commitment and our dedication by allowing trials or difficulties to come to see how much we love and, and, and willing to die from self enough to enjoy him more and to serve him better because the more we die from self the better we can serve the Lord and this is what it is all about achieving and succeeding and finishing the work of which the Almighty God want to take place in our own life, as Paul is saying. And he is saying that I, I rejoice in my suffering for you. And I want to point out also that he said I rejoice in my suffering for you. And let me inject this as well. There ought to be a joy in each of us for whatever 
we may have to go through for each other. It is important for us to feel each other's care and conditions and circumstances that we want each of our fellow men and women, sons and daughters, to be better as they move toward all things. The Lord is perfecting. The Lord is blessing us. And we should have joy instead of complaining. May the Lord give us the grace to be thankful and to give him praise and give him glory. I don't believe there's a greater love. But let me say it this way. Jesus himself said, the love that I give you, the love that I have for you, no man can give you more than I have given you. Let me say it this way. This is the greatest love that can come from any individual because we were on our way to eternal damnation. And it's almost like the Lord Jesus Christ created a roadblock. And that roadblock was his own person. It was his own self who refused to let us wind up in eternal damnation. He wants us to know how much he loves us. And for Paul to say how he enjoyed suffering for us, that the work that must be done in all of us, or let me say it this way, in, in the church, it is a blessing for me to understand the need. And, and I will not allow myself not to rejoice and appreciate the opportunity to serve God in a manner that will bring pleasure to God, will bring glory to God, and blessings to the church. Earlier, Paul said, uh, had prayed that the Colossians endure with joy. In the first chapter of Colossians, in verse 11, he said for the church to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long sufferings with joyfulness. He doesn't want us to go through 
representing Jesus Christ in a sad and seemingly unexcited way. But what a privilege it is for us to have been chosen to represent someone who is so gracious, so loving, and so kind. I say unto the people of God, let us find joy. Let us find what's deep in the representation of the church supporting the body of Christ. Again, he said to the Colossians church in the first chapter in verse 11, strengthen with all might. This comes from the almighty God. According to his glorious power, unto all patience and long sufferings with joyfulness. It's wonderful when we can move toward our all things with this kind of joy and this kind of appreciation for the opportunity to have a role in the representation of the Almighty God. Through blessing and representing the members of the body of Christ. He wants us to be excited as Paul is expressing his joy for the opportunity. For whatever is lacking, whatever is not yet finished in the body of Christ, in the church, in you and I. You rejoice in taking part in fulfilling it and bringing it to pass. Colossians 1, 12 through 13 says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the powers of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has given us a place on a higher level. And he calls it delivering us from the power of darkness and translating us or transporting us into the kingdom of God. Or into the kingdom of the almighty God himself, the Son of God. He now affirms this as his own experience. Paul is saying to the church, that's where we are. That's what we believe. That's what we must receive. This relocation from the powers of darkness to the kingdom of God. From the powers of darkness, he has translated us. Who now has delivered us from the powers of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. 
he now affirms this as his own experience. The striking concept that Paul's suffering bore on behalf of the Colossians complete what is lacking in Christ after afflictions it is not limited to this passage the Lord is letting us know through this apostle there ought to be a an appreciation, a place that we have found in God. That we can be there for each other and inspiring each other by the life that we live and by the commitment of which we have made and enjoy being transported from the kingdom of darkness to kingdom of light from we are no longer in the dark but we are the children of the light we are the children of the almighty may we enjoy Jesus on the level of which the apostle Paul is indicating we should the Holy Scripture is calling us and causing us to rejoice. May he bless us to enjoy with him. Complete what is lacking in Christ's affliction. It is not limited to this passage. The things of which is to be not done now is not redemption. The Lord Jesus Christ paid the redemption price. And he is now working on each of us through each other. For that part of us that have not yet been fully developed. It is not the way God wants us to conduct ourselves uh, if we cannot rejoice in God. We are now failing to enjoy our own development. But when we begin to appreciate God on another level, he will move us into that area of appreciation. 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 5 and 7 says, For as the suffering of Christ abounds in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. For as the suffering of Christ abound in us. So our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Christ is there throughout the journey. And he won't those he has redeemed to recognize what he is to us even in the process 
of being perfected and being developed. He is our consolation. For as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abound by Christ. Whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffered. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation or salvation. And verse 7 says, In our hope of you, is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also of the consolation. There is a partnership going on. There are promises that God is sure to bring to pass in all of our lives. We need to look further toward all things that we can envision and so we'll have something that is somewhat of a magnet that pulls us forward and, and let it be the presence of God in our lives and what we have come to appreciate about God who promised us that he would be there. He is saying that all of his promises a yea and a man. The Lord wants us to trust him and be about the business of the kingdom. So the consolation that he wants us to know will be with you. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and verse 12 says that so then death worketh in us, but life in you. There are those who must be ready to die in order. to help others to enjoy a higher life in God. In many ways that we can think of, when I'm willing to endure what my brother or sister was not able to endure to say to them I'm there for you. It's a blessing to know and to be around those who've come to know the Lord to this extent that we can rejoice in God that we can enjoy had it been called and here we are in the very body of Christ delivered from the powers of darkness and translated 
into the kingdom of his dear son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Look where we are. Look how blessed we are. I say to the wonderful body of Christ, we have so much to give God praise for. Let us look forward to a strong finish. Let us look forward to what has been accomplished to where we are that we can go on to fulfill what the Lord himself want us to enjoy. We want to finish strong, shouting and praising God. May the Lord continue to bless you to see him in a light that we've never seen him before. To every son and every daughter, let us trust and rely and depend upon the loving, caring Savior. Whatever it is and wherever you are at this moment, just know that the Lord is there and your sisters and brothers are also there. Let's believe that. May the Lord bless you. And until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. And so be it. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord and thank you for joining us for today's virtual worship. I am so excited to be a part of what God is doing. We will have our midweek worship on this Wednesday at 7 p.m. So join us as we are always given a timely and anointed word from heaven. And remember that disciples make disciples. So be sure to call at least three people this week and share your story of God's love with them. And then invite them to join us in worship. Now, if you have been blessed through this ministry over the years and would like to sow a seed either into the Jacksonville or Lakeland campus, giving opportunities are on your screen. Rest assured that whichever campus you choose to support will promptly receive your funds. And thank you again for your continued support to the work of the ministry over the years. If you haven't already, press the like button or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Are you in need of prayer? Our pastors and the prayer team would love to touch and agree with you. You may call the church office right now at area code 904-768-4009. Type your name in the comments, inboxes, or send your prayer request via email to refugejacks at yahoo.com. We look forward to touching and agreeing with you. We also send our prayers and support right now to those who are experiencing especially tough times and our heartfelt condolences to the families who are experiencing bereavement. And in just two weeks from today, we will celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, the birth of the church commemorating the descent of the Holy Spirit as told in Acts 2. So invite someone to celebrate with us as we give praise to our God for sending us the Holy Spirit. Now don't forget we do have our Bible class via teleconference today at 11.30 a.m. And until we see you on Wednesday evening, as our pastor, the Most Honorable Apostle, Dr. Gentle L. Gruber says, it's getting better all the time.